but are important, I believe, to have a debate about. Particularly when you consider, if we don't do it, what else we might have to do. But for full disclosure, I want you to know that those that you are familiar with have been placed in this budget. There are no there are surprises, something else I committed in those uh, public employee discussions. We looked for creative new revenue. And here's the controversy. Turn on your camera. Not that this will make any sense to you, but to the folks inside this room, I know it will. I just, again, when I'm looking at some of the cuts that were offered me at the Department of Public Health and the Department of Human Services, even to the Department of Children and Family that I didn't want to make, and I wanted to go through this for months and months. I've worked on this budget as much more than anything I have ever done in public life. I've been working on this almost every single day for almost a year now. And, and I went back and forth because I know the Board of Supervisors can't stand this. But I can't stand the alternative now to the extent they find the alternative and the add back process, perhaps they will. But I just, this is a debate I, I want to have because I just think this is principled and right. And that's condo conversion fees. I believe we can generate $8 million of revenue that would go to offset our general fund contribution to affordable housing and not have to make an equivalent cut in discretionary programs that disproportionately impact poor people. And for me, this is de minimis in terms of the overall housing market. I don't, I, I really, I, I've been doing this 16 years, almost 15. I still don't get this argument fluidly, except it's big time ideological discussion. It's so darn ideological, I think it gets in the way of having a real discussion about what this can mean in terms of increasing revenue, not just this year, but in subsequent years, that can be used to help programs for poor people and working families and the working. 